My name is Scott Christensen and welcome to this quick video tutorial about how to conduct a Google Analytics experiment in WordPress. A web analytics experiment is a way for us to ask some questions about the performance of our website and get them answered using real world users and data. An experiment can help us determine what is the most effective way to present my website or pages, what presentation or design is going to get the most people to buy my product, fill out an application form, call me, click on an ad, or spend more time on my site. Right now, when a user comes to a page on my site, they are presented with the layout, text, images, and other presentation elements that I have decided are the most effective for engaging with my visitor. But what if I'm wrong? What if there are alternative ways to present my site that would be more engaging for my visitors and would get visitors to interact more and in the way I want them to interact with my site when they visit? Wouldn't it be great if I could experiment with different versions of a page and then see which is the best one? Google Analytics Experiments allows us to do just that. What we're going to do is we're going to set up one page or URL to which we're going to direct our users to visit. However, when the first user visits that URL, they will be directed to one version or variant of the page. The next user is going to be directed to another variant. The next user after that is going to be directed or can be directed to a third variant or even more. You can have lots of variations, some of which might be very subtle differences in presentation, but might make a big difference in performance. Once these users are divided up to the, into their various experimental groups, we can then measure their interaction with our site, the duration spent on the site, the amount of transactions, the bounce rate. By doing this with a large number of users over a period of time, we can gather some statistically significant data about the performance of each of our page variants. We can really know what is the most effective variant or version and steer every user toward that page when our experiment is over. Now to conduct this experiment, you're going to need a couple of things. First, you're going to need a self-hosted WordPress site, not one that's on WordPress.com, a Google Analytics account, and you need to have the Google Analytics tracking code added to your site. There's a plugin for WordPress that I like to use called Google Analytics for WordPress. For this example, we are going to direct users to a page called Pets, but when they go to that particular page, they'll be directed to either a page that contains photos of cute puppies or photos of cute kittens. We'll then measure the amount of time that the user spends on our site and see which variant of the pets page we should be using if we want to get people to spend more time on our site. Let's go ahead and get started. I have two websites open right now, Google Analytics and the dashboard on my WordPress site. Let's start out with WordPress first. I'm going to go down here to Settings, and under Settings, I'm going to find the a particular setting page for permalinks. These are our permanent links to our various pages and posts. What I'm going to do is make sure this is on the default so that it will assign a number to each page and each uh, post that I do. This will be very valuable coming up in a bit where we'll actually make a decision on where to send people to. So I'm going to save that change, and now all my pages uh, will be referenced by a particular number. I'm going to come up here to Pages then, and I'm going to create these three separate pages. The first one I'm going to create is going to be just called Pets, and this is the site that we're going to direct people to, and that they're going to um, be further directed to either the Kittens page or the Puppies page. I just call it pets, that's all I have to do. And there it is. You'll notice that there is a page ID of number 84. I'm going to write that down because that will become useful here in a little bit. I'm going to make another new page called 
I'll, let's start out first with puppies. In this case, I'm actually going to add some uh, content here. I'm going to add some media. Um, I could come in here and actually upload puppy pictures. So if I find my puppies, I'll put them all up there. Boom, boom, boom. They, there they go, one at a time. And from this, I'm going to create a gallery. So this will have all my puppy pictures in one nice gallery for people to look at and hopefully spend more time on my site. I'm going to insert that gallery into the page. And I will also note the page number. So in this case, it's page 86. Okay. I will go ahead and publish that. There it's published. I'm going to add one more page for kittens. Once again, I'm going to have a nice gallery of kittens for people to browse through. We could obviously add more descriptions and things like that to these particular images, but I'm just going to, uh, for the time being, get them uploaded and then be able to create a gallery. So I'll come over here, create gallery, insert that gallery, and publish my kittens page. Okay, and that says a page ID of 100. I'm going to write that down as well. In fact, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually s select this entire part and copy that because I'll need to enter um, all this part of the URI up here. Um, so I don't want to have to type that in. So I'm just going to copy that right now. Okay, great. So we should have, if I actually view my site, in a new tab here, we should actually have kittens, pets, and puppies. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to have people actually see these two options, okay? Because I'm going to steer them toward pets, and then they'll be auto-directed to either kittens or puppies. So what I need to do is go back to my uh, dashboard here, come down to Appearance and Menus, and in this case I just have the default structure, so I'm going to um, Remove kittens, remove uh, puppies, and create menu. You may have already altered your settings, so you, if you have, you probably know how to deal with that. Okay. Notice here I just have pets. Okay, that's the only option they have to go to. Now I've got everything in place. I'm ready to set up my experiment. I'm going to come over here to Google Analytics. I have lots of different accounts, but I'm going to find the account that I actually um, have this particular WordPress instance set up with or tied to. I'm going to come in here. You can see it's not used very heavily. I don't get a lot of uh, traffic on it. But when I come down here to Behavior on the left-hand side, I'm going to be able to see this area for experiments. Okay. You can see some old experiments I did before I made this little tutorial to make sure this is going to work. Uh, but I'm going to click here on Create Experiments. So I'm going to uh, call this experiment um, Testing for Pets. The metric I'm going to use here uh, is based on site usage, so I'm going to select Visit Duration. I'm going to take all of my website traffic and experiment with it. If we have a large volume of website traffic, we might be able to take just a certain percentage of our website traffic and use that for our experiment and still get a statistically valid uh, result. If you want to be notified about important changes, such as the experiment ends because it uh, reaches conclusion and has enough data, you can turn that on. Next step is to actually 
give it my original page and the different variations. So uh, I'm going to paste that in here and I remember that my original page is not 100 but is in fact 84. Okay, And we should see that load here and sure there's the one that says pets. So this next variation is going to be the one that was 86. And I'm going to call that one puppies. And sure enough, there's the puppies. I'm going to add another variation to it. And that will finally be my kittens. I'm ready to go to the next step. And now I'm going to get some code from Google that I'm going to insert into my original page. So see, paste this experimental code immediately after the opening head tag of your original page. So I'm going to copy this, okay, and now comes a little bit of trickery. We're going to have to actually have a way to insert this into just the pets page and not the puppies, kittens, or any other parts of our WordPress site. What we'll do is we'll come in here to the uh, appearance and then go to editor. And this is where we can actually edit the uh, PHP code as well as the style sheet of our particular theme that we're using for WordPress. Ideally, we would actually be doing this in a child theme, but I'm going to actually uh, put it directly into the theme itself. The problem with uh, doing the method I'm showing you here is that if there was an update to this particular um, theme, uh, my modifications here would get overridden. That's why we use child themes. <coughs> I'm going to come in here to the header, so I clicked on header.php, and I can see then um, how the head of my uh, document is generated. What I'm going to do here is actually just come in right after this first meta tag here, and I'm going to, uh, before the title, and I'm going to insert that Google Analytics code. Okay, so that's great. We've got it inserted, but the problem is this would appear on every single page. So what I'm going to do now is a little bit of PHP code to actually make sure that this only happens on the pets page. Oops. So uh, bracket question mark PHP if and then is page, and we know it's going to be page 84 is our original one. Basically what we're telling it to do is if we happen to encounter page 84, then execute this code that's below here. Otherwise, ignore it. I need to have an ending statement for this if statement so that it knows what is just the code that I want to include when we happen to hit this page 84. Okay. I'll update this file. Once I have successfully updated the file, I can then go back to Google and go to the next stage here and hit next step. It's going to actually validate uh, that everything is set up correctly. It says on the original it found the experiment code as we needed. It found the Google Analytics code and uh, also on these other two it found the Google Analytics code so it can actually track uh, this now for us. Okay, the Google Analytics, I didn't show you how to do that, was already set up in advance. Okay, our experiment is now underway and is running. So now if I come back to my WordPress site and I visit the site and I click on pets, I'm directed to either the puppies or the kittens page. In this example, what has happened is I'm now part of the puppies experimental group. So all my interaction with the pets page will be redirected to puppies. This is done through a cookie that Google is placing on my uh, machine right now. This helps me stay in that experimental group. So even if I end up clicking around to different parts of this website, I'm always going to be directed back to the puppies page 
when uh, I click on the pets URL. It also uh, not only helps us better collect data for our experiment, but also make sure that our users don't get confused. I might be a little confused if uh, I click on that pets link and all of a sudden I'm starting to see kittens. So once you're divvied up into one of these groups, that's where you're going to stay. So that concludes this quick tutorial. Uh, you should see the experiment running. You can let it run uh, and it will uh, tell you when there enough data has been collected to actually make the decision on which is better, puppies or kittens. I think, of course, we all know that puppies are better, but that's a uh, matter of some debate apparently for some people. So we'll have the data to actually back that up. 